Hello, this is Neil from iPaintGirls.com, and I'm doing Poison Ivy. This uh, skeletal structure right here that I just did with the legs, um, it's kind of cool, uh, the little lightning bolt things. I might do a tutorial just showing it. It's really neat because I was watching this other guy. I like watching how other people draw as well and what techniques they use to save time. And this lightning bolt technique is really interesting for the legs. Um, I do a little differently he does. He does it to where the outline is the you know, the outer part of the muscle, and then the inner part of the lightning bolt is the calf. I do it where the inner part is part of the knee. Anyway, I'll have to explain what I mean by showing, like, a just a standard pose. So, um, I'm just trying to, you know, block in the the main movement here with the, you know, blocky type skeletal structure and just keep building up your racing, building up your racing. If I was doing this non-digitally, I'd have to either erase with a kneaded eraser or you know, just keep tracing over like I usually do with a piece of paper for you guys can see it easier. But typically I work with this light pencil and just keep working up a darker pencil and need, er and need eraser until I get, you know, the basic form what I want. So I have this idea like she's kind of like running and uh, maybe she's in the middle of an attack and uh, she's, you know, pulling ivy from around her and then she's like throwing ivy out maybe to out from her hand that's wrapped around her arm and throwing it out like maybe she's going to capture someone with it or something. I didn't like the way the uh, face came out at all right here. I just totally skewed it up. See, first thing I did right here, you notice the eyes are way too close. Keep in mind that pretty much no matter what angle the face is at, there's always going to be an eye length in between the two eyes, or a normal eye length between the two eyes. And I know the eyes need to be slanted a little bit, and so I'm like, okay, I need to slant a little bit. I'm like, what the hell's wrong? Like, I don't know. Sometimes my brain doesn't register what's wrong as I'm working. And I see something's wrong. I just, my brain doesn't register why it's wrong sometimes. And so I just leave it there for now, because I don't feel like thinking about it. And I come back a little bit later, and I go, okay, the eye needs to be moved, so I move it. And then I realize that the whole face is just kind of jacked up, and I don't really like the way everything's positioned, so I just kind of redo it. Uh, I don't like the way the face turned out. So the face turns out much better after I redo it, though. Right, so now I'm just adding in uh, a little bit of shading. Uh, at this point, I decide, okay, the eye is definitely too close, so I make sure it's an eye part away. But even then, I still don't like the overall look of the face. Just something still don't look right about it. So I come back and fix it. Um, the hair also, I didn't really like the way the hair came out, but I didn't really feel like fixing it, so I just left it the way it was. And this is, this is just a quick sketch, you know, to capture an idea. Uh, if I were to take the, the sketch further, you know, I would completely redo everything in, like, Illustrator or something for the line work. Depends if I want a comic book look or a painted look. But I would just, you know, redo the hair completely uh, to make sure that it overlaps everything and looks cool. And so you see here I'm just adding um, some basic two light shading. And when, when you think about shading, uh, when, when you're lighting anything, think about first just one light source, your main light source and light it like each object individually. So the leg is like a cylinder and light it like a cylinder. Then pay attention to the muscles and know what, you know, where the shadows will fall. And then after you have that, then go back in with a secondary eraser, a secondary, with an eraser to do the secondary light or, um, you know, it depends if working on paper digitally or not, or another color. And then you go back and add the secondary light. And the secondary light is going to go into the shadow area uh, on the, on the, on the farther side, like the left side of the shadow area. Maybe I'll do a video showing what I mean on that. It's kind of like, see right there how I did that first? I did the shadow on her breast, and then I did the, you know, the secondary lighting, which goes into the shadow. But I think I might do a tutorial on that specifically. So I redo the face. Like I said, I didn't like the way it was, so um, this comes out much better. The nose kind of gives me problems. Cause I, again, I'm working really tiny, and I'm having to use a size one brush just to do this. Uh, so when you work this tiny, sometimes it's kind of difficult. But anyway, I eventually get it to where I think it looks okay, so I leave it. And uh, the hair, I just, I, I had the things, the f hair, the same thing I did last time, man. I don't know why, what's up with that. I need to just sit there and draw, draw hair a couple times, like fill up a sheet full of hair just until my brain registers it right again. Because I don't know, I'm getting in this bad habit and uh, when I'm sketching hair and I don't want to be in that bad habit. What I did there is I did lines and then I did the blur tool. And that kind of comes in handy too when you want that kind of um, soft shaded look for quick for quick sketches. I'm working with the neutral background, almost kind of green since it's poison ivy. That way I can add some highlights using gray. 
gray. You don't want to use white, white, but uh, you know the gray comes out looking pretty white. And so just about done with the sketch. I think the idea is pretty cool. It's uh, it's kind of captured a neat look. I probably could twist her hips away from us a little bit more, opposite the way her boobs are are twisting, and that would probably add a little bit more movement or dynamicness to the whole pose. But I don't know. This looks kind of cool too, so I don't know. It does. It I I didn't, you know after I um, drew it, I realized hey, this pose is very similar to the Xena painting, but I didn't even think about that when I was doing it. Uh, originally, I was going to do a much closer shot, where it's just like her waist and head and arm, uh, but then I figured that doesn't capture enough movement. So now I'm just doing the IVs overlapping each other, going around. And then I'm going to um, do some IV in the background there. Then to make her arm and seat further in the background, I'm going to leave it darker. And I'll even, I'll even emphasize that more when I just add like a quick background. I wasn't going to do a quick background, but I said, what the heck, I'll just do it, because it, you know, it didn't like five minutes, so you know, it's just really quick just to kind of hint at something in the background, kind of a silhouette type of thing. It's kind of it's kind of amazing what you can do in five minutes, you know, if you just kind of silhouette a background uh, with some cool brushes, you can, you can hint at something, kind of, there's something back there. Okay, well, thank you for watching. This is uh, Poison Ivy. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you can learn something just by you know watching the quick sketching process. I know I always.